G'day, Starlo here. And I'm on Hobart's Derwent River, but I'm a lot further upstream than Hobart. I'm actually up near New Norfolk. A lot of people that know this area will recognize the big paper mill over here. It's uh, a year or two since I've been on the Derwent and I've never actually fished it at this time of year. It's early February, believe it or not. <laughs> Despite the weather, it's quite cool and overcast and threatening to rain. And I've come and put the boat in to see if I can find some of the Derwent's famous black brim. It's got some monster brim and some good numbers of them, but they do move around a heck of a lot. So I'm gonna see if I can find some, and I'll share with you some ideas on looking for brim in a system, particularly if you're new to that system. So stick with me and we'll see if we can find <laughs> the Derwent black brim. I've got a bit of a run ahead of me as I want to head downstream past Bridgewater. I've had some intel on the grapevine from Brim Guru Plinio Torian that this might be a good place to start looking. As always, I've got my kill switch lanyard on too. It only takes me 15 minutes or so to get to where I'm going, observing all the channel markers and speed restrictions along the way. The weather's fairly calm and heavily overcast. Nice fishing conditions. So I've come down past Bridgewater under the old bridge and the new one that's being constructed and I think this is called Green Point, I'm not sure, but there's a little bit of broken gravelly rocky stuff along the shoreline here. There was a step up from about five metres of depth up to about two and a half and then it shelves up to the shore. There's a little bit of life on the sounder, a few bait fish, some larger targets that could be mullet, could be salmon, could be brim. So I've put on uh, a squidgy wriggler, bloodworm squidgy wriggler on a little two gram head, really good prospecting lure. And I'm just gonna start working the edges. I'm gonna fish fairly quickly and see if I can find some active fish. The tide's running out. There was a fairly big high earlier on. It's starting to run quite hard now. I like a bit of water movement. It might help me find the fish. Let's see if we can find a couple. Even though I said I was going to fish reasonably quickly to search for fish, I still take the time to work my plastics properly, getting them down, using lots of stops and starts, and keeping them in the strike zone. In this scenario, fishing quickly means keeping the boat moving to cover new water with each cast, not working the plastic quickly. It's a subtle but important distinction. And sure enough... Oh! I think that might have been a little flathead. <laughs> Didn't feel like a brim. First cast though, to get a hit, that's uh, not a bad sign. Well, I've had a couple of hits so far. I suspect they might have been from small flathead and I've been picking up a bit of weed, but as I get down towards this point, which is being really ripped by the current, the bottom's a lot cleaner. I like the look of this. Oh, it's got a bit on the drop. The run out tide is pouring past this point and it's also back eddying down along that shore. So it's splitting here. It's a prime spot. And there's a bunch of cormorants sitting on a snag over here. Probably another good sign. There we go. There's something. What have we got? It's a reasonable fish. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've got the right kind. <laughs> I love this point here where the, the current is ripping around. It's always a good spot. I reckon we might have our first Derwent brim for the day. Yep, we have indeed. 
Oh, well that's good. It hasn't taken me that long to find a couple. Yeah, there's no monster, but he's all right. I'll slip the net under him. I'm on a fairly long six pound leader. Water's actually quite clear, even though it's dark. The water's clear, so I've gone for a long six pound leader just to give myself a bit of finesse. And there's a lovely chunky Derwent brim. Smaller than average for this system. <laughs> but there's got to be small ones as well as big ones. on the bloodworm squidgy wriggler. What a lovely clean fish too. Very nice. Look, it's just perfectly pinned. <laughs> I'll pop him in the live well. Right, well I was picking up a fair bit of weed and slime on the squidgy through there where I got that first fish. So I've actually swapped over to a small shallow to mid depth running hard body. And I'm gonna try through there again and just try and keep it above the weed. There's got to be more than one brim in there. I crank this lure down to its running depth, then work it with frequent short pauses. Oh yes, good hit. Good hit. Didn't connect. You've got to expect to miss a few, but at least if you're getting hits, it's a good indication that you're doing the right thing. Keep doing it. Notice also how I regularly glance at the sounder to make sure I'm still staying in that two metres or so of water. I may need to go to a shallower runner. This is diving into the weed as well. And pretty soon I did switch to a shallow runner, taking a moment to give it a quick smear of S-Factor bite stimulant too. <laughs> Love that stuff. Let's see how this goes. Oh yes, that was a hit. Got him. Yeah. Oh. I do love the way they hit a hard body. Oh, he's coming straight out of the shallow stuff into deeper water. Head shakes. <laughs> well, there you go. It's just been a matter of change ups. Oh, he's gone right around the boat. Started with the plastic, went to the mid depth hard body. Oh, come on. Oh, I think he's found some structure. Oh dear. Yeah, he's found something. I'll have to get back up on him. He's out, he's out. Oh, did me, did me like a dinner. That hurts. That was a big brim, that one. <laughs> he came out of the shallow stuff, found some rock and weed out here, and uh, that six pound leader was a bit too light. I'm gonna stick with it though. Ooh, this is exciting. Damn. <laughs> I'm still shaking after being destroyed by that last fish. I made a couple of rookie errors on that fish. I just took it a bit too casually. I thought, okay, it's swimming out into deeper water. I'll take my time. I forgot just how much structure is down there. I should have used the electric to keep a shorter line. And then when he did get into cover and I got him to swim out, I should have just kept light pressure and gone after him instead of loading up again and cutting the six pound leader on the barnacles. Oh, did me. Hmm. <laughs> Woo. Okay, I've got uh, the same kind of shallow runner on, different colour, I don't think it'll make much difference. See if we can find another one and stay connected this time. Some big brim in here, I think. Alright, we're coming down into the zone where I've had a couple of hits and 
lost that cracker. That's got to be pretty close to the money. Oh yes, that was a hit. Come on. Yes! Oh! What the heck? <laughs> I don't think that's a brim. It might be a big mullet or it could be a trout. It's late in the year for sea runners, but it's not an impossibility. Oh, no, it is a brim. That thing jumped as soon as I set the hooks. <laughs> uh, brim never ceased to amaze me. It's not even a big one. I'll just motor us out of here so we don't spook all the others. There's a few in there. They're right up on that shallow stuff on top of the rubble. Don't even think I need the net for this one. I would not have thought that that was a brim, the way it came out of the water. <laughs> but it sure is. <laughs> nice, chunky little black brim. I will put him in the well just so he doesn't scare the others away. And then we'll do that run again. This is looking pretty consistent. I just want to stay connected to one of those big ones. Back into position and casting up onto that shallow ledge again. Oh yes, come on. <laughs> Watch the rod. Yeah, that's a, that's a good fish. Oh, I don't know how shallow it is in there. I'm gonna use high rod angle. Oh, that's a really good fish. Oh, it's shallow here. Yeah. I'm keeping the rod way up high to keep as much of the line and leader out of the water as I possibly can. Just put spot lock on. It's a nice fish, but I don't think it's in the league of that one that I lost before. Huh? Which side do you want to come up, mate? The current here is just amazing. Yeah, he's all right. He's nothing special, but, <laughs> oh, they're all special. <laughs> this is a good bite. Oh. So dark and chunky. <laughs> Again. Not a giant. Nothing like that one that stitched me up. <laughs> I know when they get away, we always say they're big, but that thing was just so powerful. Just pinned. I'm missing a few hits. They're just nipping at it. All right, in the live well. Let's see if we can catch a proper big one. I don't know how long they'll stay up on these rocky flats, the way the tide's dropping out. They'll probably pull off there fairly soon, but let's see if we can get another one. It's only about 30 centimetres deep where I'm casting, shelving out to a metre or so closer to the boat. So I need to concentrate on keeping the lure just above the rocks and weed. Oh, smacked it! I can see them chopping bait down here. Let's see if we can get one of those. Oh. Yeah, oh. They're, they're on the surface here. Oh, another go. It's very unbrim-like behavior. They're up smacking bait fish. They're all over the surface. So shallow in there. Getting weed as well. This is really exciting brim fishing. Pay special attention to those pauses. They're the key. Yep. Oh, he's a good fish too. 
just coming out of such shallow water, I think the next step is going to be to try a surface lure on them because it is getting skinny up there. Feels like a reasonable fish. Uh, yeah, I reckon it might be the best one I've actually got to the boat. Still not in the league of the one that got away. <laughs> in such good nick. Great fish, what a great fishery this Derwent River black brim fishery is. It's probably about the same size as the, the best one that I've got in the well so far. We'll have one more go with this shallow runner. And then I am going to try a surface lure. That'll be exciting. Notice how I really mix up the retrieve. Lots of pauses, lots of little jerks of the rod tip. Southern black brim, love that. Straight retrieves are not particularly effective on them. I'm also keeping the rod tip up a lot to keep this lure high in the water, even though it's a very shallow runner. It is so shallow in there now that even this lure is hitting the bottom. All right, we're coming down into the, the good zone. I'm, <laughs> it won't last forever because the tide is dropping out. Oh, just saw one move there. All right, I'll just drop us down. Oh, as soon as I did that, I got a hit. And he came back. Ate that on the absolute pause while I was mucking around with the electric motor. Oh, big head shakes, good fish. Come on, come out of there. This feels a bit more like that one that I lost before. Oh, I just saw colour. It's a pretty good fish. Oh, trying to keep him up as high in the water as I can. So I know how much bad stuff is down there. <laughs> you can see why I love my brim fishing. Seriously. Right in the middle of suburbia. Catching just a stunning sport fish. Oh, this is a proper one. This is a bit more like it. This is what the Derwent is more famous for. This would be similar to that one that shredded me before, I reckon. Oh, nice brim. Nice brim. He's wolfed that minnow. That's the thing, when it's on the paws, they can just suck it in. Team. No, he's certainly easily a kilo, that one. Have a look at what he's done to the little minnow. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, he's about probably 1.1 kilos. I'd say about um, 41 centimeters to the tail tips, 38 to the fork. We'll see how good I am in a minute. <laughs> and that minnow is down the hatch. That's gonna take pliers. Well, you saw me make the guess of 40 to the tips and 38 to the fork. He's exactly 40 to the tips. And he's probably 37 and a, no, 37 and three quarters. <laughs> Those are two, two centimeter marks there. So about 37 and three quarters to the fork, 40 to the tip. So I didn't do too bad. I have seen a lot of brim and measured a lot of brim over the years. So I guess you should get good at it after a while. All right, I'll get these hooks out, get him in the live well. Do you think we should try a surface lure? Yeah, me too. <laughs> 
All right, so we've caught them on plastics, we've caught them on mid runners, we've caught them on shallow divers, and now I'm going to have a go on the surface using one of the Shimano ligands. It is getting so shallow in there. It's really the only way to go. Oh, there's something feeding in there. Wasn't a great cast. Oh, he's on it though. <laughs> That's a good fish too. Still there. Still there. Come on, eat it. Oh, he's still there. Did everything but eat it. Oh, that's promising. Oh, it had a bit of weed on it, that's probably why. Ooh, one just had a look. Oh, come on! Yes! Come on! Oh, that, I love that smack they make. Just a little bit uncommitted. <laughs> oh, I probably should have changed to this earlier. The breeze has gone right around to the east northeast now and starting to pick up. Might be all over. That wind change. I often find a wind change will just shut things down. If you've got a nice bite going and it changes, not always good. Oh! <laughs> Still the odd one in there. Oh, he's got... Got him! Got him! Ha <laughs> ha! On the surface! Oh, pretty good fish too, pretty good fish. Oh, pretty good fish. Real good fish. <laughs> Job's done, I wanted one on the surface. Well, it's not done yet, but I'm happy just to hook one. Nice fish. Oh yeah, solid. Ah, oh, I am a happy camper. So glad to be able to show you all the different methods for catching brim, all in one stretch of water. And look at that one. Smoking the ligand. I do like these ligands. You can work them in so many different ways, that's what I really like about them. <laughs> look, if you've been enjoying this, can you just give me a thumbs up down below? And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, hit the button. There's lots more like this on there. I'll get this bloke in the well, we'll try for one more on the surface, and then I'm gonna head home for an early lunch.